explain to us some of the ways that some of the larger Forex traders are using CME Group Futures. It's a CME Futures. The Forex market is is huge, trading trillions daily. CME Futures is probably the largest centralized FX marketplace out there. So a lot of the larger Forex players look at our marketplace for, for liquidity. For liquidity, I mentioned... Um, Trading the price when you're looking to to transfer risk and, and being able to know you're going to get that price is very important to some large banks. What's up, traders? Anthony Grudelli here, and thank you for tuning in to the Futures Radio Show podcast. In today's show, we will highlight the differences between Forex and futures. We will also discuss the advantages that traders may have when choosing FX futures over Forex. My guest for today's discussion is Paul Houston, the global head of FX products at CME Group. Today's podcast is brought to you by CME Group. Whatever the obstacle, CME Group provides the tools that global market participants need to manage risk and capture opportunities. With 24-hour access to futures, options, cash, and OTC products across all major asset classes, you can drive your trading strategy forward with confidence and precision. See me group where risk meets opportunity. Traders, before I pull Paul in here, I want to remind all of you about the Currency Cup, the FX trading challenge that will take place from July 23rd to July 28th at CME Group. I highly recommend you go and register for this free event. You will find the link in the description. If you're listening to this on audio, it will be down below. And of course, if you're listening to this on YouTube or on our website, please click on the link below to go and participate in the Currency Cup FX Trading Challenge, where you're going to be have uh, an opportunity to compete against other traders, to go in there and test your strategies. And what's really cool is that CME is always giving prizes for things like this. So I definitely recommend going and, and checking out What's happening at CME Group for the Currency Cup FX Trading Challenge. Paul, welcome to the show. Thanks, Anthony. Great to be on. Great to have you here, Paul. I'm excited for today's discussion because the Forex market is huge. I know a lot of Forex traders that come to me and say, Anthony, why should I look at futures if I'm trading Forex? And I know today that we're going to highlight some of the benefits that uh, FX futures have uh, over Forex. And I think what we can do before we even get into that is, Paul, you're the global head of FX products at CME Group. Talk to us about what is entailed in your job. Yeah, sure. So um, we operate the, the market, so FX futures and FX options. We have 40 currency pairs for FX futures. And it's also about dealing with, uh, we have 90,000 unique traders in our marketplace over 2022. So it's dealing with any issues or queries that arise from those customers. It's also about launching new products. So we're constantly looking at current product to make them more efficient, but also around launching new currency pairs or new types of trading. And it's also about, um, I guess, working with our sales force, our brokers, our ISV partners to ensure our products are distributed, our markets are as accessible as possible. So it basically involves just running the, the business from, from front to back and uh, looking at all asp aspects and growing currency trading as CME. Fantastic. And let's just jump right into it now. I, I want to discuss, first off, what are the key differences between FX futures at CME Group and Forex trading that makes a currency futures, I think, in my opinion, a better choice. Yes, yeah, so a currency futures can be a, a lot more efficient to trade than FX, F, F, the, the Forex market. So the Forex market is huge. It's uh, largely over the counter. So it's counterparty to counterparty. Banks often hold the key to credit. So ultimately, even if you're facing a broker, you're ultimately uh, uh, facing a bank. And it's... Uh, it's pretty complex to navigate. It spans geographical boundaries. There's not one central uh, overriding uh, regulation. And uh, there are multiple use cases. So what the CME do is we offer FX futures and FX options. And we, we allow you to trade on our exchange and access movements in, in currency, take a view on currency by just trading simply an FX future. Uh, the dates are more standardized. There's more netting because the, the trades are ultimately cleared against the central counterparty. And the market is operated under CME principles. So it's it's all to all. Every price, the price is indiscriminate. So every uh, price is accessible to all participants in the marketplace. And because it's all to all, there's not a traditional liquidity provider to a customer relationship. Participants can trade passively. So they can capture some of the bid offer spread. They can also aggress the price. 
and the, the liquidity is firm. It's very much there to be taken and they're traded on immediately. Do futures have less counterparty risk than Forex? Yeah, so by the nature, they have less counterparty risks. Uh, Forex is an OTC marketplace. There's counterparty risk. You, you face the counterparty you trade with. Futures face a central counterparty, the CME, a regulated central counterparty. And because the trades are all uh, standardized around a certain date, they're very much nettable. Exposure netted against central counterparty. So A, there's less exposure. And B, it's faced and netted against a central counterparty. So this can indirectly benefit many participants. It attracts a lot less credit risk. Uh, it frees up a lot more credit line and also less counterparty capital risk, which is charged to banks, but indirectly is often charged back to customers. Let's talk about any scenarios that you believe that trading a Forex market would have any advantage over trading a futures market. There certainly are some scenarios. I, I think if, you, uh, if you're looking to trade a specific date in the future for certain cash flows, the futures by definition uh, are more standardized. Although we've aimed to be more granular, there's often a trade-off between being standardized and uh, very flexible and bespoke. And a lot of the benefits in our marketplace are defined by standardization. So if you wanted to trade a, a certain date in the future for a specific cash flow, then Forex or the FX market is more advantageous there because we offer standardized IMM dates, both monthly and quarterly. We offer more dates on our options market. We actually have every day of the week for two weeks and then uh, weekly options out for a month and then quarterly is out for, out for two years. So there, there are some aspects of our marketplace that are quite bespoke. But I would say if you're a corporate hedging specific cash flows, then sometimes, often the Forex market is advantageous. If you're looking to speculate, trade on currency moves, then futures can offer a, a great deal more efficiency because of that low cost standardized nature of trading. You know, I know a lot of Forex traders and some really big ones. A lot of them will use CME futures as well. So they'll primarily trade in the Forex market. Explain to us some of the ways that some of the larger Forex traders are using CME Group Futures. Yes, the CME Futures, even the Forex market is is huge, trading trillions daily. CME Futures is probably the largest centralized FX marketplace out there. So a lot of the larger Forex players look at our marketplace for, for liquidity. For liquidity, I mentioned um, trading the price when you're looking to, to transfer risk and, and being able to know you're going to get that price is very important to some large banks or some large proprietary uh, market makers. So we see a lot of the bigger players using uh, FX futures as risk transfer. We also increasingly, particularly over the last couple of years, because there's more regulations in the Forex market, we see a lot of more asset managers and buy side players actually use Forex for efficient trading and hedging. So if you think about facing a clearinghouse is often more efficient because of that netting I mentioned, but also that counterparty risk is important to chip managers. If they have a large structural hedge on, which they continually roll, which is hedging some underlying portfolio, it's important often to have a, have a counterparty you can face that doesn't chew up and exhaust a lot of credit lines. We have a larger retail participants. So our futures are listed on every or most of the major retail brokers. And we see a lot of uh, retail customers that trade through these platforms that trade FX futures that are listed on some of the major retail platforms instead of Forex because of those efficiencies. So let's talk about the little guy a little bit now. A lot of the retail traders that maybe want to come out, you know, speculate in price in these currencies. What advantages would they have moving to a futures market versus a Forex market? Well, they generally get the benefit of knowing that they're trading on a, a CME marketplace. So they're all, the CME operates with the, the principles it does in other asset classes. Uh, you know, we're completely segregated. We operate venues. We operate uh, a clearinghouse. We don't have any trading arms. Specifically for FX, that our marketplace is all to all, as I mentioned. So the price is very transparent. Often because of the sheer fragmentation, bilateral nature of the Forex market, prices differ from counterparty to counterparty and for participant to participant. CME's market is completely all to all. The price that Citigroup gets is the same as the price that the small guy gets. And as I mentioned, the different ways of trading, so capturing the bid offer spread. A lot of our retail participants actually trade passively, catching the bid offer spread. So I think 55% across all our futures were, were traded passively by retail participants over the last year. So there's some of the advantages, and as well as just the clearing, the standardization. If you're trading other asset classes at the CME, such as equities or rates or commodities, then you can clear your FX and futures through the same account and face the same FCM as you can with the other asset classes and sometimes get benefit of cross-margining and margin efficiencies. Absolutely. The cross-margin and margin efficiencies is, is 
extremely important, you know, if you're trading these other asset classes. But one thing that I want to talk about before I get to my next question is the price. You mentioned something that I think is extremely important when it comes to futures markets versus forex markets. You said that price that they see on the futures markets is the actually the price that they're going to get. Explain to someone out there that maybe not, that doesn't understand why that is so important that you actually get that price that you see in the futures market versus potentially a different scenario that may happen in a Forex market. Yeah, so, so sometimes not all the time the price in the Forex market is uh, subject to something called last look, where there is some optionality for uh, liquidity providers to, to actually reject the trade if certain conditions are met. The CME offers firm liquidity. So all that means is just a firm price. The price you see the, is a price you could, you could trade upon. And secondly, in, in some retail participants, prices, there's actually some spread embedded or some fees embedded in the spread. CME just shows a bid and offer that is uh, based on, on the market bid and offer. So it's more transparent from that respect. Of course, we charge fees, but those fees are also transparent. So the price and the fees should give users full transparency into the cost of trading. Yeah, thank you for explaining that. Next, I wanna talk about something that impacts everybody. If you have currency, you know, whether you have the dollar, if you have the euro, and you wanna hedge it, how can traders that use currency futures use futures to hedge more effectively than Forex? So um, if you wanted to hedge an underlying currency exposure, we have, um, you know, as I mentioned, 24 currencies that are traded and cleared at the CME. So um, hedging those uh, effectively is uh, looking at liquidity in our screen, understanding the, the amount you need to hedge. So for example, in our euro dollar FX futures, each contract is worth 125,000 euros. If you wanted to hedge a million, obviously you trade eight and you would decide how long you want to put that hedge on, uh, trade to the most liquid point, which is typically our front quarterly. So our June has just expired and our front quarterly now is September. And you would hedge to that September point. When it comes to September, you would decide what to do. You take physical delivery, or you could look to roll it again to um, to December. As we've mentioned uh, several times, the counterparty risk and efficiencies of facing the CME often make that a more efficient hedge than facing either multiple counterparties on the uh, in the forex market or even one exchanging margin with that one counterparty. The standardization, the benefits of clearing can offer great efficiencies to, to customers looking to hedge. Explain to everyone out there how a currency future can be physically settled. So again, if you're trading that euro versus dollars, that's uh, a futures, say one contract's 125,000. If you trade it at 1.09, then you have an obligation to exchange euro for dollars on that uh, September IMM date. So the currency is inferior physically delivers, but in fact, most participants actually roll their uh, currency exposure forward. So that would be buying and selling the, the exposure when it's due to settle and selling and buying to December. So in case if you brought, you would sell uh, September and by December, and then your exposure will be moved to December. Two weeks before every roll period or, or every IMM expiry, we have what's called the roll period. So that's two weeks of a very liquid trading in that spread market. We have bank, we have retail, we have corporates, buy side hedge funds, all trading that spread. And 80 to 90% of the open interest, say at the June expiry, which is just gone, actually rolls over to the, um, to the next uh, quarterly expiry. So uh, it's very liquid. Uh, we focused on making the costs of holding futures, for example, as cheap as possible. So we cut the, the minimum price increment in those roll spreads to be very low level. We cut the G5 currency pairs by 60%. So the cost of actually rolling that currency uh, future forward is cheaper than ever. And about 10% of that currency gets delivered. And most of the delivery is, is by major banks who are trading in this roll market and providing liquidity. And that delivery actually goes into the, the Forex market and through our clearinghouse. But most uh, end users, the small guys, the buy side, the corporates actually just roll that exposure forward. How does this differ from how a Forex has a settlement? So d there are some similarities if we do settle. And 10%, as I mentioned, of open interest does settle. So if you're to settle the CME market, you settle the same as a Forex market, you have to settle for a bank. The Forex market has a settlement service called CLS, continuously linked settlement. And what the CME do is they utilize CLS. So for example, uh, if you're a client of Citi and there was another client of JP Morgan, you would settle with each bank respectively, and those two banks would meet in CLS. So the CME Clearinghouse facilitates that and... Uh, operates this efficient settlement mechanism, which tries not to disrupt and tries to utilize the, the Forex market settlement mechanism and the, the commercial bank network. How can traders use currency futures or options to take advantage of market volatility more effectively 
than Forex. So trading futures, uh, there's, I guess one, one key differentiator is trading futures and FX options. You just have access to the whole of the CME and the whole counterparty universe at the CME. That could not only be banked, but as we've mentioned, there are 90,000 unique users in the FX futures marketplace. There's access to all that huge liquidity and that differentiated liquidity. So one of the big selling points we push is we do have strongly differentiated liquidity. It's different than facing a bank directly or different facing liquidity provider directly. So you don't have to set up documentation with all of those uh, individual traders. It'd be very prohibitive. But in the OTC or in the Forex market, to access liquidity and to trade on the price, you inevitably need to set up a, a prime brokerage agreement or alternatively a direct uh, credit line and, and CSA. Big benefit of our marketplace is just the all-to-all nature. And we've talked about the firm liquidity and that applies to FX options as well as FX futures and um, also the different ways of trading. So not only aggressively, but passively. Discuss what products that CME Group offers for FX you know, futures. Talk about micros, we've got the regular size products, and you've got options. I mentioned the currency pair coverage. Uh, most of our um, volumes are focused on the G10 currencies and, and Mexican peso, uh, Brazilian real, and South African rand. So they're markets we've all grown over recent years. On the future side, we offer standardized futures, so full size amounts. But we also offer micros in several currency pairs. The most commonly traded are um, a euro, Australian dollar, sterling, yen. And those micros are a tenth of the size, similar to other asset classes, a tenth of the size uh, of the standardized futures. They're largely traded by retail. So for many of the retail platforms I, I mentioned, we offer standard futures and micros, but also traded by other participants, market makers looking for, I guess, more precise hedging. Uh, most of the futures expiries are quarterly IMMs and the front quarterly is the most commonly traded, but we also offer strip of monthly IMM futures and we're working on building a spread market. So a spread market trading between monthlies and, and quarterlies in intra role to offer you know, more liquidity to different types of uh, trading styles. On the uh, option side, we offer less currency pairs. So around 24, most of the volume is in the G7. We've recently launched uh, Chinese renminbi and we're looking to, again, with the futures, looking to expand our uh, influence across to different currency pairs. And it's, this takes some time to bring new participants on. And the options have more granularity than the futures. They're more complex. They're, there's more hedging points. We have weekly options. So we actually now have weekly options for every day of the week for the first two weeks. And we see uh, a lot of short dated options traded. We have weekly options Monday, Wednesday, and Friday out to a month. And then we have monthlies out to a year and then quarterlies out to two years. So a lot of different points. The options market is actually completely aligned to OTC in terms of expiry times and cutoffs. So often when uh, a trader is looking at the OTC market, they can trade more efficiently if our markets offer a suitable proxy. So facing a central counterparty, all the netting benefits, all the firm liquidity I've mentioned can offer advantages to certain traders. In both marketplaces, we have several different types of customers. We have bank, we have non-bank market makers or proprietary trading firms, all the, the buy side corporates and, and retail. So it's a very diverse liquidity pool. Uh, absolutely. I mean, when you look at the scale of different products that you have to trade on these currencies and, you know, talking about the options, I mean, the zero DTE craze and equities it is even available for these FX futures products, you know, you can trade these options are, like you said, they're expiring. I don't know for, if it's for all of the FX products, uh, maybe you can touch base on that a little bit, but for pretty much, I think probably the majors, you have a daily expiration or well, their weekly uh, options, but they're expiring every day. Yeah. So every day for two weeks, they're, they're for the G5 options. So the major heavily traded currency pairs every day for the first two weeks. We recently launched Tuesdays and, you know, similar to equities, we recently launched Tuesdays gotcha. and Thursdays. They've had pickup already and they're actively traded by, um, you know, multiple participants. People love trading these daily options, Paul. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm actually one of them too. I do like them as well. And we also have something we didn't even mention. We have a med contracts for the Euro. Uh, the Euro. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, so there's just so many different products and uh, that CME Group offers. Uh, Paul, thank you so much. Uh, for joining me today. I want to remind all of the traders about something very cool that CME has going on. When you look at uh, challenges, this is probably one of the going to be one of the most sought after one that CME Group is going to be hosting. It's going to be called the Currency Cup FX Trading Challenge from July 23rd to July 28th. And that is going to have prize giveaway of $2,500 for first place, $1,500 for second place, $850 for third place. And I love these challenges. I participated in a lot of them. A lot of times I'll do videos for these. I think it's a great way for traders to go out there and test 
uh, their strategies, build some camaraderie with other traders as there's going to be thousands of traders uh, in these uh, uh, challenges. And you can go out there and really try these products that maybe you've never tried before. So if you are a Forex trader, I think it's a great opportunity to go out there and try the futures. Any comments on what you guys have been doing with this, uh, the currency cup and these trading challenges, Paul? We're looking to find the brightest traders out there and looking for them to use a CME product. Uh, you know, as I said, we have a multitude of products across micros and standards. So uh, excited about this uh, launching. Yeah, it's going to be great. Remember everybody, the link will be down below in the description. If you're watching this on YouTube, of course, if you're on my website, the link will be uh, in the description there as well. And if you're listening to this later in audio, it is also in your description. So just go there and click on that link and it'll take you directly to the Currency Cup FX Trading Challenge. Once again, from July 23rd to the 28th at CME Group. But remember everybody, uh, follow CME Group on Twitter uh, at CME Group and go to cmegroup.com to learn more about uh, these futures products. Paul, thank you so much again. First time on the show. It was great to speak with you. Look forward to having you back on the show again. Great. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Futures Radio Show. If you enjoyed the show, please leave a five-star review on iTunes. Never miss an episode. Go to anthonycrudelli.com and get on our email list for show notifications and for free content that is exclusively for subscribers. Also on anthonycrudelli.com, you will find tons of videos and education on trading futures, options, and crypto. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Opinions expressed are solely my own and my guests, and they do not express the views or opinions of my sponsors. Future's radio show is produced by Crudelli Productions.